Saints, we love you, we bless you, and as I said uh, two weeks ago, isn't it wonderful that we can still have guest speakers? And those of you who remembered our Spirit Wind Conference, when Dr. John Bosman came and they brought all those ministers here, and we had a great conference. We haven't had a conference the whole year. I don't know about you, I'm suffering from withdrawal symptoms. But uh, we can have John, Dr. John Bosman with us today, and uh, he's going to minister the word to you, and I know that you're going to be tremendously blessed by this amazing apostle of God. So he's ministering to us from the United States of America. Open your hearts, prepare yourself, because I believe God's Spirit's going to touch you, and he's going to do a deep work in you. Father, we thank you today that your word comes with life, with revelation, and with power. Thank you for the anointing on this word as Pastor John Bosman ministers it. It will bear much fruit and touch these lives. I bless you as you watch this uh, ministry by Dr. John Bosman. God bless you. Praise the Lord and greetings to you. I'm Dr. John Bosman and I'm coming to you from Frisco, Texas. I'm filling in for Pastor Johnny Holbert today, and I believe that we're going to enjoy our time together. I realize that in a broadcast such as this, we don't have a lot of time, but we are going to make the most of it. I so appreciate to be able to do this for my dear friends, Pastor Johnny and Patricia Krobler. They are some of the finest people you will ever meet in life. Great pastors, great leaders, great friends. But today I want to draw your attention to a portion of scripture that is probably one of the most well-known in the Bible. As a matter of fact, most of us know it off by heart. Regardless, I'm going to read it out of the Bible. It is Psalm 23. If you have time, look it up on your phone or get your Bible or whatever you may have, and let's read it together. It simply sounds like this. Psalm 23, beginning in verse 1. It says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely, Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Or perhaps we can read it like this. I will dwell in the house of the Lord for as long as I live. This still remains an intriguing psalm to me. I've, I've done a lot of study and I'm going to try and encapsulate it all for you in the next few minutes. When we start and we look at this psalm, Psalm 23 and verse 1, it says, the Lord is my shepherd. The powerful thought there is we've got to ask ourselves the question, who is my shepherd? The answer is, the Lord. And if you look at that in your Bible, you will realize that the Lord is referring to the great Jehovah God. If we ask ourselves the question, who is this Lord? 
The psalmist even gives us the answer somewhat in the next psalm, in Psalm 24. He says in verse number 8, asking almost the same question, Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. So who is this Lord that is my shepherd? He is the King of glory. He is the great I am, the creator of this mighty universe, the one that spoke everything into existence, the one declared things to be, and it happened exactly the way he commanded it to be. He came from nowhere because there was nowhere to come from. And coming from nowhere, he stood on nothing. And standing on nothing, he got a hold of something and commanded to stay, and he did. He is the great creator God that holds this mighty universe in his hands. He's the one that spun the world. He is the one that controls the planets. He is the one that makes the sun to rise, the sun to set. He has ordered the seasons to follow one after the other. He is the great I am, the great God. And that God is our shepherd. Oh, what, what a strengthening thought to realize the God that we serve is a mighty God. Uh, some time ago, I heard somebody say it like this, uh, looking at verse 1 still, it says, The Lord is my shepherd. What more do I want? And that is so true. If God is our shepherd, our guard, our guide, our ever-present God, why should we worry or fret? Why would we look anxiously around us? Why do we think that he will not see us through? If he controls this whole mighty universe, he that spun the stars into space like glittering diamonds on a black velvet blanket, will he not care for you and me in whatever we are facing in this day? We have confidence in him. Because he also said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Wherever you go, I will go. I will be with you until the ends of this life. So my friend, I want to encourage you. Do not lose your faith, your trust, and your confidence in your shepherd. The one that is protecting you and leading you and guiding you. But, but I, I really want to spend a, a few more minutes on verse number four. Verse number four is really what I want to capture in our moments together. It says it like this. Yea, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. And the first thing I want you to notice over here is that when, when the psalmist begins to describe this real life moment of walking through a valley and he realizes that God is walking with him through the valley, it seems as though his whole perception is, is changing. You will notice in verses 1, 2, and 3, He's making statements. He's saying, the Lord is my shepherd. He maketh me to lie down. He leadeth me. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. But then when he comes to the fourth verse, he says, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil for thou art with me, thy rod 
and thy staff, they comfort me. In his experience of walking through the valley, he is discovering God on a different level. He's not just making statements. He now realizes his relationship with God is a real relationship. It is a personal relationship. He's now addressing God. He's not talking about him. He's talking to him. And friend, I, I just want to talk to you for a few moments on the aspect of walking through the valley. Yea, even though I walk through the valley, I'm so happy that I can tell you right now that we are walking through the valley. First of all, let's, let's be real. What, what is a valley? What, what causes a valley? A valley is caused by the mountains that surround it. If there are no mountains, there will be no valley. But the truth is also that it's pretty cold in the valley because when the sun begins to go over the mountaintop, it fills the valley with shadows and it makes the valley very cold. But I do want you to realize that the shadow on this side of the mountain is an indication that the sun is shining on the other side of the mountain. God has not disappeared. God has not left. I want to say to you, the sun is going to shine for you again. I have no idea what valley you may be walking through. Wow. We've all come through this valley. We're all still walking through this valley called COVID-19. This pandemic is no fun. Many of us have gone through the pain and the agony and the discomfort. All the pressures, all the things that have changed. Our environments have changed. The economy has changed. Going to church has changed. So many things have changed. We don't know what the new normal will be if there's ever going to be a normal again. But besides that, I, I realize that there are some people that are walking through valleys that they feel like have become indescribable. Maybe a marriage, fallen on the rocks, financial stress, loss of a job, disappointment, rejection, sickness, I have no idea what valley you are walking through. But let me assure you that God is walking with you through this valley. He knows your pain. He knows your agony. He knows your stress. He knows your loneliness, the rejection. He knows all of that and he is walking with you. Realize that you are walking with a God that understands who you are and where you are. But please notice this one little word in verse number four. Yea, though I walk. What does that mean? That means I'm not standing, I'm walking. I'm making progress, moving forward. I'm in motion. I'm not going to set up camp in the valley. And this is what I want to tell you, listening to me right now. You should not set up camp in the valley. Don't set up tabernacle in the valley. Keep moving. How do you keep moving? By keeping on praising God and worshiping and making statements of faith, believing God that you will get through this. You and I realize that if we face storms of life, the worst thing you can do is to stop, like facing a hailstorm, driving in a car on an open road, and there's a hailstorm that comes forward and it feels like it's going to try and crush you. The worst thing you can do is to stop and camp there. You've got to keep on moving because if you keep on moving, you will eventually get out of the storm. 
But if you stay where you are, that storm is going to beat you up. So my friend, I want to tell you today, don't stop there. Don't weep, don't mourn, don't give up, don't throw your hands in the air and say nothing is going to work. Instead, make statements of faith. God will come through for me. I know this shall pass. Make statements of faith, statements of praise, saying God will come through for me. There will be provision. There will be healing. There will be breakthrough. I'm not going to camp in this valley. And every time you pray, every time you praise, every time you worship, every time you make statements of faith, you are moving closer to your breakthrough. So I want to say keep moving. But I want to say you also have to realize that growth only happens in the valley. They don't grow all the fruit, trees and plants and vegetables and stuff on the mountaintop. No, the wind and stuff will destroy it there. The sun is too harsh. The nutrition is in the valley. That's where they grow the vineyards and and the fruit and vegetables and plants. That's where it grows because that's where the nutrition is. So friend, as you and I are walking through the valley, let us realize that growth takes place in the valley. And perhaps one of the things, one of the reasons why we're walking through the valley is because we need to learn something. We need to grow in some area. God has a purpose for it. All things work together for good eventually. Can I say that again? We concentrate on on this segment, but I've added another word. I, I, I want you to hear me when I say that. All things work together for good eventually. We don't always understand these things. We don't understand the, 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 the resistance and the temptation. We don't understand that. But it's all going to work for the good eventually. And here's another thought that I want to leave with you. I almost feel like I've just come through the introduction, but let me leave this thought with you also. It says in in verse number four, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. So it, it tells you and it tells me that not only are we walking We're not camping, we're moving forward, but it tells us we're walking through. What does through mean? (laughs) Through simply means through. We're coming to the end. We're coming to the end of the valley. So my friend, in this simple psalm that we have looked at together, there's so much courage and hope that comes forth. First of all, we're not alone. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we know that God is walking with us. We're not alone. We understand that we cannot stop. We understand that we keep on moving forward. But then we end up by realizing, <laughs> There's a through. I'm coming to the end of the valley. So I'm saying to you, my friend, you're going to overcome. You're going to make it. You're going to be healed. Your marriage will be restored. And God is going to bless you every step of the way. Don't give up. Don't give in. Don't throw in the towel. Keep on going. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Well, praise God for that incredible word. You are going through. 
Hallelujah. In a valley of the shadow of death. And I was reminded by someone once, it's just the shadow of death, it's not death, just the shadow we are going through. And you are going through in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for your blessing on every saint, on every believer, as you're with us and you carry us through, you release your precious anointing. We thank you for your strength in every home and your blessing on every household. In Jesus' name, thank you for a miracle week. Amen. Now, dearly beloved, one of the deepest valleys to be in is the valley of sin. Valley where there's no way out, but there is a Savior, and His name is Jesus. And if you're watching the show today, and you say, Pastor Johnny, my heart's not right with God. But I want to turn to that great shepherd to lead me out of the shadow of death and into His kingdom. He's a Savior. He's a Deliverer. He loves you. He shed His blood for you. He made a way for you. And if that is you, I want you to, just where you are now, lift your hand and say, Jesus, here's my life. I believe in you as my Savior. Save my soul. Deliver me from sin. Now, Father, as these hands are raised, as these people turn their hearts to you, Jesus, the only Savior, I thank you for hearing their cry. I thank you that you came for sinners, Lord. You didn't come for the righteous. You came for sinners. And you shed your blood. Now bind every spirit of deception in Jesus' name. And Father, I thank you now for release of your power and your saving grace in these homes. Now I want you to pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, just pray it out loud. Heavenly Father, I confess today that I'm a sinner. And that I believe that Jesus, your son, died on the cross, shed his blood to be my savior. More than that, Lord, I believe that he rose from the dead. And now, Lord Jesus, my living God, I give you my life. I confess you as my Lord, and I receive your salvation. Thank you for washing me in your blood and setting me free. Jesus, from this day, I will live for you. Amen. Now, Father, as these have given their lives to you. I thank you for your blessing. I seal them with your precious spirit. I thank you for your hand and your touch on them. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, God bless you. Bless you, saints. I know that this is going to be a miracle week for you. Now, I've got one more thing to say. Sunday was great, but Monday is better. God bless you. <laughs>